What's going on everybody, Kulipas Tech here coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some beginner tips and tricks for the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2023 to help you get more used to using it. Now as always, if you do end up wanting to learn more about this phone, be sure to check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to change your wallpaper. To do this, what you're going to do is go to settings, which you can do one of two ways. First, you can go to the settings app, which I personally put on the home screen. But if it's not on your home screen, what you can do is swipe up and it's going to be somewhere in here. So let's see, the settings app is right here. And if you want to add it to your home screen, you can press and hold and drag it wherever you want. The other way to get to the settings is by swiping down from the top like this. One more time. And the settings icon is right down here. Now once you're in the settings menu, go to wallpaper. And then from this menu, you're going to have several different options. You can choose between your own photos, stylized so you can customize the theme a bit, dynamic, and then curated images, which is pretty much just stock wallpapers. So for this, we're going to go here. From here, go to change wallpaper. And now you can choose whatever you want. So I'm going to go like this. This screen is basically just going to give you a preview. So as you can see, the home screen and the lock screen. When everything looks good, hit the check mark. And now you can select home screen, lock screen, or both, and that's pretty much it. Now that was easy enough, but now I'm going to show you an even quicker way to change your wallpaper and customize your home screen even more. So for this, what you're going to do is press and hold your finger on a blank spot on a home screen. Make sure it's not an app or a widget. If you do that, it's going to do this, which is not quite what we want. So again, a blank spot on the home screen, so like this. In this menu is going to show up. From here, you can personalize the theme, change your wallpaper, add and remove widgets, and customize some additional home screen settings. So definitely a nice convenient menu, especially when you're setting up your phone for the first time. Now I'm going to give you a quick tour of the sound menu. Now of course, you can technically get to the sound menu from the settings, but a quicker way to do it is by pressing either volume key, so like this. From here, go to these dots, and from here, go to settings. And right here is the main sound menu, so you can control all these different volumes. So media volume, call volume, ring volume, notification volume, and alarm volume. And keep in mind by default, the volume keys are going to control the media volume. Under this, we got do not disturb. And while you can turn it on from this menu, you can also just swipe down from the top. And do not disturb is right here. Then we got multi-volume, so if you want different volumes for different apps, maybe for example you're playing a game where you typically have the sound off, but then maybe you want the volume all the way up if you're using Spotify, definitely a cool feature to have. Under this you can change your ringtone, so if we go here, we get the default, a few different presets, and you can also add your own. In addition to the ringtone, right here we got the notification sound, so pretty much the same kind of thing, and the alarm sound as well. You can also turn on live captions, so if you want a caption speech. Vibration and haptics, so if we go here, you can control all different types of vibration. So ring vibration by default, it is going to be on. And there's also feedback when you're touching the screen and stuff like that. So definitely a lot of options to play around with. And we also got several different system sounds. So dial pad tones, screen locking sound, charging sounds and vibration, and then the power on sound. All these will be on by default, but you can always turn them off if you want to. And then touch sounds and always show icon when in vibrate mode. These two are not going to be on by default, but if you want, you can turn them on. And speaking of vibrate mode, one last sound related thing I want to show you is a quick way to toggle between vibrate mode, silent mode, and sound mode. So back to the main screen or wherever you happen to be on on your phone, it doesn't really matter. If you want to quickly put your phone in mute or vibrate, what you can do is hit a volume key, tap on the bell icon, and you can change it to silent mode or vibrate mode. So definitely real convenient. Now I'm going to show you how to control which apps can send you notifications. This is definitely a big one for me because of course as you get more apps, you're going to get more and more notifications and I don't know about you guys, but I personally don't really like getting notifications from a bunch of different apps, especially ones you're barely using. So I'm going to show you how to turn them off. To do this, what you're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to notifications. Then from here, go to app settings. And by default, it's going to show you the most recent, but if you're setting the phone up for the first time, for example, and you're downloading a bunch of apps, you might want to turn them off before they even get a chance to send you a notification in the first place. And in that case, what you can do is hit this drop down, go to all apps. And of course, this is going to show you all the apps on your phone and you can see which ones have notifications on and which ones don't. So you can turn notifications on and off from here. Now I'm going to show you how to use dark mode. To do this, go to settings. From here, go to display. And then from here, dark theme is going to be right here under appearance. So toggle it on. 
And as you can see, we are now in dark mode. So pretty cool, especially at night. In addition to this, if you go here, you can also set a schedule so you can have it turn on from sunset to sunrise or set a custom time. In addition to this, if you just want to quickly toggle it on or off and you don't really care about the schedule, what you can also do is go to your quick menu by swiping down twice from the top. So one, two. Now by default, it's not going to be on this menu, but if you want to add it, hit the icon right here. This is going to show you everything you have on the top. And below this line right here, it's going to show everything you can add. So as you can see, dark theme is right here. So press and hold, drag it to the other side, and now to save it, just hit the back button. And now whenever you go to this menu, dark mode is going to be right here. Now I'm going to show you how to change your screen lock. Now by default, the screen lock is going to be a pin, which is pretty standard for any phone. And I also have the fingerprint scanner, so definitely cool there. But I'm going to show you some other options. So to get to these, what you're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to security and privacy. So right here. Then from here, Hit the drop down right here where it says device lock. And we're going to have a few different options. So first of all, we got the screen lock. Let's go there. Enter your current pin. And from this menu, as you can see, you can choose between none, swipe, pattern, pin, or password. As you can see, none and swipe are pretty much no security. None is basically no lock screen at all. Swipe is at least somewhat of a lock screen, but again, there's no security. Pattern is more of an old school kind of Android thing. Pin again is pretty much the standard. And then finally, password if you really want high security. In addition to this, if we go back from the same menu, you can also set up the fingerprint scanner and the face and lock. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to take a screenshot. Definitely a real simple feature here. So whenever you wanna take a screenshot, all you have to do is press the power key and the volume down key at the same time. So like this, and there we go, you can save it, edit it, delete, whatever you want to do. And keep in mind, you don't actually have to hold the buttons. All you have to do is press them real quick, but just make sure you do it at the same time. So again, the power key and the volume down key, just like that. And in addition to this, if you have an app open, another way you can technically take a screenshot is by going to your recent apps and hitting the screenshot button right here. Now, I don't really know how useful this is, but just keep in mind if you ever want to use it, it is an option. Now, I'm going to show you how to change your system navigation. Now, as you can see by default, we got three buttons down here, which is the typical Android navigation, but we do have some other options here. To get to these, as always, go to settings. From here, go to gestures. So right here. And then from here, go to system navigation. So as you can see, again, by default, with this phone, you will be on three button navigation, but if you want, you can also use gesture navigation instead. With gesture navigation, instead of buttons, you're gonna have one line at the bottom, making it look a little bit more minimalistic. Now, if you've never used this before, let me show you how it works. To go home, swipe up like this. To go to your recent apps, drag your finger partially up and just basically hold it so like this. And to go back, swipe from either side. So definitely really simple, and while I know a lot of people just prefer the buttons, if you haven't already, I definitely recommend giving both a try, because who knows, you might end up liking gesture navigation better. And then finally, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to change your screen time out time. To do this, go to settings. From here, go to display. And then from here, screen time out is right here. So as you can see, I have mine set to 30 minutes, but I honestly don't really recommend this. For me, I just do it for these videos. In general, if you're doing something like reading, for example, or something where you really want to keep your screen on, even then you don't really need a long screen timeout time. You can always turn on what's called attentive display, which basically detects your face with the front facing camera. So as long as you're looking at the screen, it's going to stay on regardless. So in general, unless you're in my literal situation where I have a camera between my face and the phone, all a long screen timeout time is going to do is just drain your battery faster. So yeah, in general, I do recommend using attentive display instead, but if you really want to, you can have it up to 30 minutes or as short as 15 seconds. But this concludes my beginner's guide to the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2023. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.